Hello everyone and welcome back to Red String of Fate. I feel like we're getting pretty close to the end now, so this might be a long episode or it might not, I don't know yet. I'm probably going to record a couple of episodes right now though so I can get out content because right now it's been a few days since I uploaded. I don't get the chance to record every day and I'm kind of lazy so I'm sort of binge recording now. Um, I don't really remember what happened in the last episode. Oh wait, that's a lie, yes I do. We found Luke and he was talking to that girl and now we're outside talking here and I think Aaron is just about to leave. Luke barely seems to have noticed that Aaron has left, still preoccupied by his own thoughts. I watch him for a minute longer, shifting my weight from left to right in discomfort. Finally, I can't stand the silence anymore and I let the question fall from my lips once again. So, who was that girl talking to you? The girlfriend? The words but oh. the words burn my tongue irony as they escape my mouth, and despite my best attempt to sound casual, I sound so much like a jealous lover that I immediately wince, wishing I could take them back. In front of me, Luke startles, his eyes finally meeting mine. What? No, forget it. I didn't say anything. Feeling awkward, I clear my throat and hastily look away, searching for any sign of Aaron. Seriously, it's just soda. There are vending machines everywhere. What is taking him so long? Oh yeah, okay. He went to get some soda, with quotation marks, aka he's letting us have some time to talk alone. My silent pleas for Aaron to come and save me from this awkward situation go unanswered, and I brace myself when Luke starts to speak. She's not my girlfriend, but she was. Huh? My gaze flies to Luke's face, and he looks uncomfortable, his hand rubbing the back of his neck in a now familiar gesture of discomfort. Oh. It takes immense effort for me to keep a straight face. Yeah. There's a long beat of tense silence while I fumble for the right words to say. I'm sorry, how long ago was it? For a moment I thought Luke wouldn't answer, but he finally responds in a low voice. Two years ago, we broke up before I left for college. Oh. High school sweethearts, huh? I'm sorry, distance sucks. No, it wasn't really the distance. This college was just an hour away. He shrugs and lets out a long, weary sigh. Without a word he starts walking towards a nearby bench, setting onto it. Confused, I find myself following and sitting beside him. What happened? The wry smile on his face turns bitter. I met her soulmate, so I broke up with her so she didn't be with him. Wait, what? That was not what I expected at all. Luke gives a low chuckle at the no doubt stunned look on my face, and he rubs his face in exhaustion. Her string leads to this kid who moved to our town the year before my graduation. He was my friend. Oh my god. <laughs> as that was like loading in, I read it as our shared love of Shrek. We met, uh, we met in literature class and our shared love for Shrek and the art of words became our bond. I didn't realise who his string led to until I introduced Lena to him one day at lunch. Another chuckle, this time darker. You could have knocked me down with a feather when I realised they were tied together by a red string of fate. Roll credits. What was I supposed to do but to let her go? I open my mouth to speak, but words fail me. No doubt, old painful memories are surfacing in his mind, and there's an unfocused look in his eyes as he recalls his past. A wave of guilt crashes over me. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have asked. No, it's fine. It's been years. I'm over it. It wasn't like we were about to get married or anything anyway. It was just high school puppy love. He forces a smile, but I can see his eyes are still haunted. It's obvious Luke cared very deeply for her once. Suddenly, all the puzzle pieces fall into place. Why Luke doesn't believe in love for himself. Why he views our ability to see the red strings of fate as a curse. Why Luke never writes about romantic love. Whoops, didn't mean to click that. Oh, Luke. I can almost feel his sadness like my own, feel the depth of his loneliness like my own. 
almost as if your soulmate. Touched by his willingness to open up to me, by the kind, selfless pers person I got a glimpse of, I find myself wrapping my arms around him, offering as much comfort as I could. Aww. Aww. He goes stiff in my arms, shocked, but he doesn't pull away. I'm sorry, I may not may not have had the same experience, but I can imagine how devastating it must have been. I may not have dated before, but I understand how you feel. Honestly, they kind of look like they could be related. They have the same hair, the same nose shape, almost the same ears. Maybe they are related, maybe that's the plot twist. His body relaxes in my arms, and one hand slowly comes up to rest itself on my arm. Oh my god, this might be it. I know. You'd probably understand that better than anyone else. The warmth of his hand startles me, and I'm suddenly acutely aware of the feeling of his body pressed up against mine. A flush rise, rises to my cheeks, and I don't need to peek down, oh my god, to know Luke is likely blushing as well. I thought for a second it was going to say, I don't need to peek down to know that Luke has an erection. <laughs> his shyness apparent in the hesitant action of leaning his head slightly against my shoulder. My heart is pounding in my chest, and Luke lingers in my arms a moment longer before we pull away simultaneously. This is kind of awkward because my cousin's name is Luke, and I'm having to read this out loud. I settle back onto the bench next to him, and we both look at everything except each other for a minute, our cheeks still warm. Eventually, Luke breaks the silence. I'm sorry, I don't know why I told you all that depressing stuff. No, thank you for trusting me enough to tell me about her. Besides, I'm just returning the favour. He smiles at the reminder of that day on the beach, but it quickly fades. Still, I usually never think about it anymore, and I've long moved on. I guess I was just rattled by Lena's sudden appearance. I didn't think she'd apply to the same college as me, along with her soulmate, or that they would try to rekindle our friendship. Lord knows why they would want to do that. Maybe they just miss you. Luke gives a half shrug, his mouth twisting. Maybe. I don't know if I can oblige, though. Why? Luke slips part, but no words come out. After a moment, his shoulders lift in another small shrug. I'll be honest with you guys. Sometimes I find myself reading, but not kind of taking in the words like i'm reading them out loud but i'm not really absorbing what it actually says because i'm so focused on just reading it i don't know um honestly i don't know what the question was um okay it's about his ex and her boyfriend um are you jealous Luke blinks, his brows furrowing. Jealous? I'm pretty sure we can always go back. I don't mean to imply that you still want her back. I'm just wondering if you're at all jealous that two people who were so important to you found each other as their soulmates, while you... I shrug, unable to bring myself to say that he suspects he doesn't have a soulmate at all. Luke stays quiet, and I bite my lip, a bit nervous about having said, okay. I'm going to say this. Miss them? I mean, they meant a lot to you once, right? Don't you miss their friendship? I get what happened was shitty, but it's in the past. You shouldn't let that get in the way of your friendship if you miss them. Luke stays quiet, and I bite my lip, a bit nervous about hanging. Are you kidding? Oh my god. Sorry, I overstepped my boundaries. Ignore what I said. You shouldn't do anything you're not comfortable with. No, you have a point. I just... I don't know. Luke sighs and rubs his face, exhaustion etched onto his features. My chest tightens at, the, at his expression, and I wrap an arm around his shoulder as comfort. I'm sorry for bringing up a sore subject for you. Want to talk about something else? Would you mind if we do? No, of course not. I've satisfied my curiosity anyway. I give him a cheeky grin and he returns a weak smile. You know, I've just remembered Aaron's existence. Didn't he say he'd be back after grabbing us soda? Where in the world is he? 
to two get lost. A smirk climbs to my face and the mental image of Aaron wandering around the campus, unable to find his way back, all because he tried to find a vending machine. Honestly, mood. If anyone can get lost, it would be him. I'll text him and ask. I pull out my phone, surprised to see a text notification, and I can't hold back a groan. What is it? Rushing, I immediately slide my phone into my pocket and shake my head. Nothing. Something came up and he texted me to say he won't be back, said he'd text us tonight instead. Thankfully, Luke is so distracted that he doesn't notice my blatant lie, and he simply nods, accepting my explanation. Aaron's text resurfaces in my mind. I saw you and Luke getting pretty cosy. Don't worry, I made myself scarce for you. You owe me one. I let out a heavy sigh. I'm going to be in for a world of teasing, aren't I? Even still, I can't quite wipe the small, please smile off my face. No, mum, don't, ah, god that was awful. My eyes fly open as I jerk upwards into a sitting position in bed, panting as though I'd just run a marathon. Just a nightmare. Brushing away the tears clinging to my eyelashes, I stare at the wall of my dimly lit room. I can feel cold beads of sweat running down my back. There's a rustling of bedsheets as my roommate turns in her sleep, mumbling something under her breath. I'm glad I didn't wake her at least. This nightmare again. I thought the recurring nightmares had finally gone away when I moved for college, but they've been coming back every so often lately. I wonder why it's happening again. What time is it? My movement's slow as though I'm in a haze. Oh, sorry. My movement's slow as though I'm in a haze. I fumble for my phone lying on the nightstand. I click to unlock the phone. In the sudden bright light from my screen, a stark contrast from the darkness in my room almost blinds me. I blink, trying to adjust to the light, and glance down at the screen again to check the time. Huh. There's a text waiting for me on the screen, apparently sent around half an hour ago at 2am. It's from Luke. What's he doing up so late? Curiously, I check the text. It's a simple two words, horribly misspelled, but I could at least make out what he meant. Sittle a wacky? Or sittle a wacky? My fingers fly over the keyboard as I type back a reply. I am now, what's up? I lean back against the headboard, closing my eyes briefly. My phone buzzes in my hand, demanding my attention. I'm sorry, did I whack a yow? This time I can't help but giggle at the typing errors in Luke's texts. It's so uncharacteristic of his usually perfect, inhumanly fast typing that I'm both concerned yet amused. About, probably. What's up with the typos? You okay? Why are you still awake at this hour? A minute passes without a reply, and I'm starting to think Luke has fallen asleep when my phone suddenly chimes away happily at a deafening volume. What the? Hastily, I pick up the call, looking over at my roommate, who stirs but thankfully doesn't wake. Are you insane? I just woke up half the building because of your call. There's a low chuckle from the other end. Sorry, I forgot you live in the dorms. I sigh, shaking my head at him, even though he can't possibly see my reaction right now. How do you know? Maybe he's watching you. Why are you calling me anyway? As you can tell by the growing amount of typos, it's rather hard to type when I'm lying in bed, squinting in the dark, so I figured talking over the phone would be easier than texting. I suddenly realise that we must both be in bed at the same time on opposite ends of the phone, and I flush for some reason. I quickly shake the strange feeling off. Well, get ba get batter at it. See, I was texting you just fine. Clearly, it's only your problem. Fine. Teach me then, Miss Texting Master. I snort with laughter, adopting a mockingly condescending tone. I mean, she could at least go into the hallway. Like maybe that would make maybe that would wake more people up. But her talking on the phone like this is going to disturb her roommate. Some things can only be learned on one's own, not taught. You'll get there one day, young grasshopper. Luke laughs, and we both fall silent for a moment, our breathing the only sound filling the silence between us. 
You still haven't told me why you're still up. Better yet, why were you texting me at this hour? Is everything alright? I'm sorry, did I wake you with my text? No, you didn't, but stop dodging the question. What's wrong? This is quite unlike you. Can't I just want to talk to my good friend for fun? I give an incredulous chuckle. At 2am in the morning? No. Luke sighs and I can almost imagine his frustrated scowl on the other end of the phone. The image brings a smile to my face. What is it, Luke? Clearly if you texted me you wanted to talk to me about it, so now that I'm here you might as well go ahead. It was a spur of the moment text that I somewhat regretted later on. It's nothing important. My voice softens in concern, and I wish Luke were right in front of me right now were in front of me right now so I could intimidate him with a glare. Obviously it's not nothing important if you're up at two A if you're up at two in the morning thinking about it. I used to be okay at reading, but now for some reason my brain just like inserts words that aren't there. It's really weird. If you want to talk about it, I'm here. There's a long moment of silence before Luke responds. Today is the anniversary of my grandpa's death. He died of a heart attack on this day five years ago. Oh. Stunned, I fall silent for a moment, unsure how to respond. I'm sorry, do you want to talk about it? Don't be, it's fine. It's not like I'm drinking myself into a stupor over the sorrow or something. It's been years. I miss him, of course, but life goes on. I just can't help but feel particularly affected every year on this day, that's all. I understand. I'd say that's perfectly normal. There's a beat of silence before Luke continues. Yeah. You know, Lena even texted me about it earlier, said something about missing my grandpa too, and that she's here if I want to talk. I guess she remembered what day to day is. Oh, wow. Really? That's nice of her. Yeah. I guess. Did you take her up on that offer? Despite my light casual tone, I find myself oddly tensing up at the end of my question, waiting anxiously for his answer. Clearly not if I'm on the phone with you right now. Besides, I don't even know where she got my number. I never gave it to her after I changed it. She must have asked around for it. I release a breath that I don't realise I've been holding. I guess my stalker has a stalker of his own, huh? Luke chuckles and the heavy mood seems to lift. You know, I'm beginning to think you're st you were stalking me rather than the other way round. How else do you keep accidentally running into me, like at the beach and in the hallways? Wow, is that really any way to show your gratitude when I saved you from your ex-girlfriend in said hallways the other day? We both laugh quietly, too mindful of the sleeping roommates to really let loose with laughter. Don't think I didn't notice your oh-so-subtle change in subject, though. Don't be embarrassed to talk about your grandfather with me. You were the one who let me cry all over you about my parents when we barely knew each other that well on the beach that day, remember? Time for me to return the favour. Luke gives a small laugh, but then he sighs. Thank you for offering to listen. I'm still sorry about this sudden phone call. I shouldn't have bothered you so late at night about this. Pfft, don't be silly. What are friends for, right? I'm glad you came to me. I'm sorry I wasn't there when you first texted me. I didn't wake up until half an hour later from a well-timed nightmare. Concern laces Luke's voice as he replies. Nightmare? About what? Are you alright? His worrying brings a small smile to my face. How like him to still worry about me when he is the one sad over the anniversary of his grandpa's death. I'm fine. I pause. The scene from my dreams. No, the terrific memory is further twisted by my subconscious sleeping mind flashing across my mind again. You know, the funny thing is, I had a nightmare about my mum's accident tonight. I guess we're both troubled by the deaths of our families today. Oh, I'm sorry. I know how rough it must be. I wrap the blankets tighter around myself, needing a moment to swallow the lump in my throat before I answer. Yeah. Anyways, I'm fine. I'm more worried about you instead. You want to talk about your grandpa? 
He was the one who brought you up and gone with your grandmother, right? Yes. He was basically a father to me. My voice softens, sensing Luke's gradual opening up. Tell me more about him. The silence drags on till I think I've pushed too far, and I was about to apologise when Luke pipes up. You know what? I will if you will. What do you mean? I'll talk about my grandfather if you'll talk about your parents. That's only fair after all. You have a deal? Startled, I titter nervously, twirling a stray thread sticking out from the corner of my blanket. Well, I... Oh, fine. You can go first. What? That's not fair at all. I was the one who asked about you first. Ladies first. I don't believe this kind of situation is where the phrase comes into play. I abide by that rule in all aspects of life, including this. Chuckling, I shake my head before conceding. Fine, fine, you win. I'll go first. What do you want to hear about? Anything. Your mother, your father, what kind of people they were, what they were interested in, what their relationship was like, your favourite memories with them, anything at all. Okay, um, the personalities? I guess I'll start with just talking about what kind of people they were. My dad, I don't remember much about him, as I've told you before. Most of what I know about him is from my mum. Apparently he's a very kind, nice person, always volunteering at charities and all that. He's also hard working and determined. My mum always talked about how he found a way to start a new life in America by himself, working his way up without complaints. Your father came here all by himself? Yep. Apparently he, migra he immigrated here from China, seeking a better life and to fulfil his dreams of becoming a screenwriter. Never got to finish that goal, but he found my mum, and he always said that was the best dream of all. I had to pause for a second until I'm sure I can speak without giving away that I'm close to tears. So yeah, he was one idealistic, determined, crazy guy. Sounds like someone I know. I guess you took after your father. I laugh softly, feeling warm at Luke's words. Thank you. I'll take that as a compliment. Anyways, I feel like it should be your turn now. I'll talk about my mum afterwards. Not entirely fair if I'm the only one rambling on and on for an hour. Fair enough. Hmm. Luke begins telling a story about the time he dragged his reluctant grandfather to go on a roller coaster with him as a child. Not for fun, but just to see how it feels like, apparently, and almost caused him a heart attack. I listen intently, occasionally adding small comments to tease Luke about his behaviour as a kid. Um, whoops, accidentally... I accidentally scrolled back. We continue talking for a long time, sharing our precious memories with our beloved families who have already left us, interjected with small jokes to keep the mood from becoming too heavy. There's something intimate about this late night phone conversation. Both of us in bed, his occasional husky chuckles in my ear sending an odd shiver down my spine. I can only clutch my phone tighter, hoping my voice doesn't shake when I speak. Eventually our conversation slows, our responses coming fewer and further in between as we grow tired. Although I also feel the irresistible pull of sleep, I can't resist asking one last question nagging in my mind. Hey Luke? Mm? His voice comes out a slow drawl, betraying his drowsiness which he had vehemently denied just a minute ago. Why did you choose to text me instead of anyone else? He takes so long to reply that I thought he'd fallen asleep already. When he finally answers me, he sounds surprisingly lucid. I don't know. Because I thought you'd understand me. You were the first person that came to mind. It takes me a minute before I can breathe out a soft, thank you. My only reply is a soft snore from Luke's end. I find myself smiling, and before I know what I'm doing, I've shifted further under my covers. God, I'm so tired right now, and this sounds so good. I hope you guys appreciate what I'm doing, staying up to record this. I've shifted further under my covers, changing my position so that the phone can rest comfortably next to my pillow. Is she gonna, like, listen to his snoring, because that's kind of creepy? 
With Nuke's quiet breathing as my lullaby, I slowly drift off to a deep, dreamless sleep. Okay, I'm going to end this episode here. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye everyone.